Symbols of Satanism. Let's look at some satanic symbolism. The first and probably the most famous is the inverted five-pointed star, also known as the pentagram. When the goat head is superimposed into or inscribed into the inverted uh, pentagram, it is known as the Baphomet pentagram. Uh, this is, of course, the main symbol of Levian Satanism. It's one of the few things I still have. Uh, I went through like this purging, this spiritual purging period where I got rid of a lot of the trappings that I had when I was involved with these organizations, but one of the few things I did keep was some jewelry. Should have brought it here today. I could have showed people in person, but I still have the official uh, ritual baphomets that I uh, got uh, in the Church of Satan. They're still in my possession. The Baphomet represents, and this is, these are the words by the uh, former high priest of the Church of Satan, Anton LaVey, from his uh, book, The Satanic Bible. The Baphomet represents the powers of darkness combined with the generative fertility of the goat. In its pure form, the pentagram is shown encompassing the figure of a man in the five points of the star. Three points up, two pointing down symbolizing man's spiritual nature. You know, I mean, they're so big in talking about the natural order of, you know, dog-eat-dog -dog world and the most brutal rules the roost. But here, in, in another breath, he's saying the original pentagram represented man's spiritual nature. Again, the four points being earth, air, water, and fire, and the top point, or the head, being spirit. In Satanism, the pentagram is also used, but since Satanism represents the carnal instincts of man, or in other words, man as just another animal, or the opposite of spiritual nature, the pentagram is inverted to perfectly accommodate the head of the goat, its horns representing duality thrust upwards in defiance, the other three points inverted or the trinity denied. And I don't just mean, he doesn't mean that in the sense of the Trinity of God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He means that in the sense of the true Trinity of thought, emotion, and action, which they want to put down in others. Look at in control organizations such as the police where this inverted pentagram is used. The crown on top of the two horns, you know, crowning the prince of hell. Victoria police uphold the right. Trust me, they're not upholding your rights. You know, they're upholding the crown's rights, authority. Another well-known symbol of Satanism, especially when it comes to what you might call self-styled Satanists as opposed to uh, organized network Satanists, is the inverted crucifix. This is very popular in Satanic music, especially death metal and black metal. Since Satan represents the ego, which is the adversarial force preventing the emergence of Christ consciousness, many Satanists embrace the symbol of the inverted crucifix. Satanism may be seen as an ideology which is attempting to invert everything that is wholesome and good, to turn good into evil and evil into good. Thus, in the view of some Satanists, the inverted cross serves to represent this inversion of standards and morals. The hypercube is a symbol of dark occultism, not Satanism specifically, but certainly a very deeply occulted, dark occult symbol. The hypercube is one of the most occulted symbolism with all, within all dark occultism, yet it is found prevalently throughout our society in the form of octagonal symbolism. And as we'll see, the two-dimensional two projection of the hypercube, which is a representation of a four-dimensional object, is an octagon. And the octagon is one of the big satanic symbols that they use everywhere. They also use the octagon in the form of two squares overlapping each other at 90-degree angles, or the double square. You'll see that all over in control-based institutions. So in three dimensions, it appears as a cube within a cube. This is a three-dimensional depiction of the four-dimensional hypercube. It's you're rotating a cube in all of its, around all of its planes, around all of its surfaces. Very difficult to conceptualize 
in the human imagination because we live in a 3D world, not a 4D one. Symbolically, though, the hypercube represents a never-ending prison which perpetually renews itself, or in other words, hell. So this is what a hypercube does. It folds in upon itself, then there's another cube. You know, the outside folds around it, and then there's another cube inside. And it just goes round and round and round and round. The matrix, you know? The matrix and rebooting it. So the perpetual prison is the symbol that the hypercube represents, is the concept that the hypercube represents symbolically. Here it is in the form of the double square. So the double square, this is from David Icke's book, uh, Great Researcher, uh, his book called The Biggest Secret, uh, where he describes the double square. The double square, one square on top of another in any form, is more secret society symbolism. In the secret language of symbolism, one square on top of another means control of all that is right and all that is wrong. Again, moral relativism. All that is just and all that is unjust, man's law. All that is positive and all that is negative. In other words, we control everything. And I, you know, joked around about this at Free Your Mind One when I gave the presentation called Occult Mockery of Police and Military. Uh, when he's saying we control everything, he doesn't mean you, police. He means your owners. He means your dark occult masters who own the police. So there's the 2D projection of the hypercube in two dimensions. And you could see the outline makes the shape of the octagon, which is inside that double square. And you see this all over the symbolism of police, often put right on the head of the police, along with other dark occult symbolism, such as the Masonic floor of the house wrapped around the brain. We'll get to the occult mockery of police and military later in the presentation. One of the symbols I haven't discussed pre prior to this is one of the main symbols of Satanism, and particularly Levian Satanism, the trapezoid. In Satanism, the trapezoid represents the imbalanced, ego-driven consciousness and identification purely with the physical self. It is considered a perversion of the, quote, divine shape, the circle, since its angles total 360 degrees. In its satanic connotation, the trapezoid is considered a, quote, soul trap, symbolizing going around in circles of base consciousness. Levian Satanists use trapezoidal altars in many of their rituals. And where is the most predominant place symbolically that the trapezoid is found, ladies and gentlemen? There it is. There's the trapezoid. That's the satanic symbol. That's why it is the satanic part of the pyramid and all-seeing eye, not the eye part. The, that eye part represents divine wisdom that they are trying to block from the world. They want to be God. They don't want the light of the creator actually coming down to the earth and, and, go, and going into the people of the earth. They want them in this prison, this trapezoid, the soul trap. So the block part of that symbol, the brick that weighs us down and keeps us absolutely rigid and unyielding and not able to, to say that we were wrong and not able to grow in consciousness and only have one unidimensional, one form thinking to stay in that, u that uniform and weight of brick, block-headed consciousness, okay? That's what the trapezoid represents. Let's look at some satanic numerology briefly. The number nine is Satan's number in Satanism. And I'll, I've explained why this is before. I'll briefly do it again. Here's LeVay's own words from the satanic rituals, the book, The Satanic Rituals. Despite others' attempts to identify a certain number, and he's referring to the number 666 here with Satan, it will be known that nine is his number. Nine is Satan's number. Nine is the number of the ego. I mean, he's telling you right here what it all represents. Nine is the number of the ego, for it always returns to itself, and he doesn't give an explanation of that. No matter what is done through the most complex multiple multiplication of nine by any other number, in the final equation, nine alone will stand forth. So, let's look at this chart on the left. One plus nine is ten. 
Then if we add the one and the zero from 10, you get one. So we started with one, we added nine, and then by adding the result, 10, the numbers in 10 together, one and zero, we're back to one. So we started with one, we're back to one. If you take the number two and you add nine, you get the number 11. One plus one is two. You started with two, you're back to two. It doesn't matter what number you do this with, with the number nine. It always returns to itself. Meaning, adding nine in symbolism, in numerical symbolism known as gematria, is like adding zero. You never add anything when you add nine. And what does nine represent? LeVay just told you. It represents the ego. Well, when you add the ego into anything, no value is added. You don't get any, any increase. It stays right where it's at when ego is continued to be added. Ego changes nothing. Now let's look at the multiplication of the number nine. Nine times one is nine. Nine times two is 18. One plus eight is nine. Nine times three is 27. Two plus seven is nine. Nine times four is 36. Three plus six is nine. Nine times five is 45. Four plus five is nine. No matter what, it doesn't matter how compl complex the numbers get. Nine times anything, you add the digits, it's nine. So symbolically, what does this represent? When ego, nine, is multiplied by anything, it comes right back to itself. More ego is created, and there's no change. You started with nine, you end up with nine. Okay? So, what does this have to do with the other number that LeVay is talking about? Well, he says that we don't want to identify with that other number, 666, the so-called number of the beast. But if we look at gematria, 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18. 1 plus 8 is 9. That means in gematria, 666 is equivalent numerologically to 9. That's why it is Satan's number, 666, 9. It's, it's an encoded you know, mathematical truth. And... This is how occult gematria basically works to symbolize concepts. Very, you know, heady, symbolic, roundabout way of explaining a concept, but, you know, as they say, math doesn't lie.